Video games have a wide range of genres and systems that define those genres. Players have struggled with or not completely understood combat mechanics in games. Let's change that. Let's build the deck. I suggest watching the entire video as there may be details you were not aware of. As you're watching, if you have any game suggestions, please leave a comment or like comments that have suggested games you'd like to see. I have waited and waited to do a Disgaea game. If you enjoy wacky anime, numbers, menus, and absurd amounts of interconnected systems, you are in the right mindset for Disgaea. Combat example, please. This Guy of 6 is a turn-based tactics game that is played on a grid. Very soon, you will see the absurdity that is Disgaea. But do not worry, I'll get into all of the numbers, menus, etc. after the combat example. All controls will be Nintendo Switch oriented. And in this combat example, you will see only a few of many wacky attacks in this game. You'll be able to see more throughout the video. Worship me! <laughs> this feels rather pleasant! Suppress you.
shall lend you a hand. How about this? Doing this for my students. It's time for a lesson. <laughs> Be grateful for this. Seems you do understand. Has arrived. Basic controls. As I said, this guy combat takes place on a grid. The left stick and D-pad buttons move the cursor. When hovering over a character, the right stick cycles through a character's different status pages. Press A when hovered over the base panel, this fancy glyph, to select one of your units to deploy. You can set up multiple groups of units to help filter who you want to use in combat because the All tab can get very long. You can also set a group that is used when auto battle is activated. I'll get into all of this in more detail later. Press A on one of your units to open the command menu. Select an action for your character. Of course, I'll get into these options, but first, more basic controls. Hover over an enemy and press A to bring up their full stats page and switch tabs by using the D-pad or moving the left stick, left or right. These same pages can be viewed for your characters by selecting the status option in the command menu. Press B while the cursor is over one of your characters to undo an action. In Disgaea 6, you can undo actions as much as you would like. You can even move as much as you would like, if it is in the character's movement area. Press X to bring up another menu that is slightly different to the character command menu. ZR will cycle you through all enemies on the map. ZL will cycle through all ally characters on the map and your base panel. Now, for the buttons that help you move the camera. These controls will help you look around the terrain. L and R rotate the camera. Hold Y and move the left stick to tilt the camera. Hold Y and press L or R to zoom in or out a set distance. Press the right stick button to change the camera angle. Of course, you can still do the other camera stuff with this angle. If you need a reminder of these controls, just look right here. 
Yeah, here, the button key at the bottom of the screen. Notice the button key changes when hovered over different stuff. Press the plus button to activate auto battle. Auto battle details will be in the AI control section of the video. Press the minus button when hovered over a character to check passives, status ailments, and buffs that are affecting the character. You can filter between positive effects, negative effects, abilities, and status ailments. The UI. There is not much here. This number and DM after it. This is the elevation level for the panel your cursor is on, so it changes when the cursor is higher or lower in elevation. Each block is 10 DM high. There are also half blocks that are 5 DM, useful for attacks or abilities that have height thresholds. I'll talk about them later. The bonus gauge refers to the bonus list. It increases as you deal damage to enemies to earn these rewards. Now let's get into... wait, I almost forgot about... this. This is a multiplier for the number of applicable actions that have been executed in a row. Some actions count towards this and others do not. Details after the next section of the video. When attacking anything, the enemy's stat page appears on the bottom of the screen along with a new piece of information. This little section here, the accuracy bar. The target's HP is displayed as a blue bar. The yellow section is the amount of health that is expected to be lost due to the attack. If the bar is red, the target is expected to be defeated. Then there is the accuracy, which of course is the percent chance the attack has to hit its target. A couple more things that can be done from here. Take a look at the button key. The minus button changes transparency. This makes the blue targeted panels a little brighter. I am not 100% sure why you would use this. When choosing a target, you can still rotate your character with the D-pad. Hold Y. All of the camera stuff works here too but hold Y and press the D-pad buttons. You can slide your character around. Hold ZR to view more details to add a bit more to the accuracy bar. Attack correction, defense correction, and damage correction. I'm not 100% sure how these work, but I take it that attack correction is an increase in damage. This changes based on what side of the enemy you're attacking, such as the front, side, or back. Defense correction is the unit bypassing an amount of the enemy's defense. I'm unsure about damage correction. If you know details of how these work or where the information can be found, please let me know. With the X button menu open, you can see all geo panels and geo panel colors. Geo panels are interesting and take a little bit to fully understand and are great for building the bonus gauge. Details later. There is also the destroy bonus box. This is how much experience, mana, and hell has been earned so far by defeating enemies. Now, let's get into details of these combat menus. The player character combat menu. Move. This is how many panels your character can move from their current position. This is also a stat that can be seen here, and has a blue boot icon. Over the course of this video, I'll be mentioning where stats are visually located on the stats page, but we'll go over all details related to each stat in the stats section of the video. Attack. This option performs a basic attack with a character's equipped weapon. Some weapons have different attack ranges. The basic attack range is shown by this gun symbol. The blue square is the targeted panel. Press the D-pad buttons to change the direction of the attack. If there is no character in the targeted panel, you cannot perform an attack. When a target is selected, the symbol with an A appears over the character's head. A for attack. When an action is set in Disgaea, it does not happen immediately. You must set all your desired actions and execute them. More on the facets of setting actions and how they play out in a bit. I want to get through the rest of these menu options. Back to Zed and his applied attack. To make the attack happen, press X to open a different menu and select Execute. Press B to cancel Zed's attack. When selecting the attack option with a spear, the panels around the character are yellow and the blue panel is tied to the cursor. Select the target and execute. Did you notice multiple enemies were hit? To be specific, the spear hits two panels when the character is facing up, down, left, or right, and hits one panel if you select one of the diagonals. The spear will only hit an ally if you specifically target them. If the initial target is an enemy, it will not hit the ally character. The yellow panels indicate that you have selected an attack option that lets you choose a specific panel to attack, whether that be a basic attack or a special. The basic attacks for other weapons also differ and there are many variations within specials. 
This will have its own section in the video. I only wanted you to understand the meaning of the different colored panels for now. Special. Select a special attack or spell that has been learned by that character. There is a lot to say about specials and is one of the many interesting aspects about Disgaea 6. I'll get into that later though. Lift. It does what it says. Move next to a character, ally, object, and lift it with the character. Once something is lifted, the lift option is replaced with throw. Throw what you lifted. The number of panels something can be thrown is indicated by this hand symbol. When selecting the throw option, a new window appears here on the right. You can see the height of your character's position, throw range, and throw height. Throw height is the max height you can throw something up to. So if a space is within range, but is over 40 dm high, you cannot throw it there. Defend. Defend with your character reducing incoming damage, represented by a D. Item. Look at or use an item from your inventory. Equip. Change your equipment mid-battle. Status. Check all status information for a selected character. I'm sure you've noticed the E that appears above characters' heads. This appears after a character has taken an action indicating they can do nothing else this turn. But if you attack first without moving, the unit can still move after the attack. The options on the X button menu. Execute. Pressing this button will make all player characters perform their assigned actions in the order they were assigned. End turn. Ends your turn. This also counts as an execute. Set all of your actions and press end turn. All of your set actions will play out like usual, and your turn will end once they are done. Characters. View all characters within the map in a scrollable list. Characters in blue are yours, and red are enemies. Yellow, or orange, whatever color you're feeling like in this moment, are inanimate objects or innocence. Innocence will be explained later. When cycling through characters in this list, the camera moves to them. Sometimes it can be difficult to spot an enemy, or you simply have overlooked them. Use this to help find any missing foes. Bonus list. The list of all bonus items you can acquire once you clear the map. Fill up the bonus meter by doing damage, and there are items that will increase it as well. When playing story missions, the item at the top on 9 is a unique one-time item. Once it is acquired, it will be random like the rest of the bonus list. Use the left stick or d-pad to check the bonus list rewards. Help. View text tutorials for various information. Give up. Here you have a few options. Retry. Retry the current map. Return to stage selection. Go back to the dimension guide to select a different mission. Return to base. Go back to the pocket netherworld, your base. Return to title screen. Go back to the game's start screen. Settings. Set the usual things like language, volume, and graphic settings. If you're on the Switch, you might want to change graphic quality mode to performance or balanced because the loss of frames on graphics. Or choose whichever you want. On the second page, there is quite a bit. Change whether attack effects happen or speed them up. Cursor, text, and combat move speeds can be changed, and more. I'll go over these more later. Others. Turn auto battle on or off. Repeat on or off is when you complete the map, if you want to start the map again automatically. Great for grinding. Setting up auto battle can be pretty complex and specific. Check the AI control section of the video for that discussion. Confirm quest. Check your accepted quests mid-combat. Confirm research squad. These are units you have sent out to explore on their own. This will be talked about once we head into the base, which is your hub area, in Disguise 6. Now, let's go over some of these combat mechanics. Starting with action turn order. As I mentioned earlier, all actions you set will happen in the order they were set once you press the execute button. Each action during the chain, beyond the first action, will add 10% extra damage, and a 10% hit rate bonus, shown by this multiplier. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 
1.2, 1.3, and so on, to a maximum of 1.9. It caps out because 10 is the most characters you can have deployed. No actions will reset the damage multiplier, but only attacks will add to the multiplier. If there is a heal or buff in the mix, it will not add an extra 0.1. Note, even if an attack misses, it will still add to the overall multiplier. Team Attacks you know a team attack has happened when character cut-ins flash onto the screen. They have a chance to happen when attacking with one of your units, and there is an ally unit within two panels. When a team attack occurs, each character who joined in will add 5% of their attack stat to the attacking unit's attack stat. Depending on the characters, the team attack rate will differ. Team attack rate can be increased by putting characters in the same squad. There are also abilities that can help with team attacks. Units equipped with the same type of weapons have an increased chance of team attacking. Note, enemies can make use of team attacks as well. When attacking, sometimes you may see Nick appear. This means the attacked unit was barely hit by the attack, so it does reduce the damage. Lift and throw. Lift and throw enemies. Allies. Or objects. Would you like to stage a full-scale map invasion? Stack all of your characters and start tossing them around. Lift an enemy and just hold them, so they can't do anything. But if you end your turn while still holding an enemy, your character will take damage at the start of your next turn. If you're holding an ally, there will be no damage taken. The lifting character can still use its attack option and specials while lifting something. Of course, after an attack, you can't throw the lifted entity until the next turn. Notice when choosing a lift, the character cannot choose move. If the unit has been holding something and the turn has ended, they will take the necessary damage and they can now move while holding what they lifted. throw an enemy on top of another enemy. They will also stack, just kidding, the thrown enemy will be absorbed into the one they were thrown on top of, gaining all of their levels. Why do this? Maybe to be rid of a pesky enemy where you would rather face a higher level version of another? Maybe? Or simply for the extra challenge in the EXP game? Do remember throw counts as an action for a character's turn. If you make the Tower of Friends, only the last character will be able to perform an action once everyone is thrown. A thrown character does not have access to move until their next turn. If you lift someone or something, it can be cancelled with B. Even if they have already been thrown, you can still undo the throw, as long as the thrown character did not take an action that ends their turn. If a unit has already been holding something for a turn or longer, you can no longer cancel the lift you will have to throw whatever they are lifting. Geopanels. These are fun and can get wild. Geopanels have to do with the colored panels within the map and these colored pyramids, called geosymbols. Pay attention to the pyramid's name and its class. Its class tells you what its effect is, and there are a lot of potential effects. I'll go over examples of a few after the explanation. A geopanel's effect is applied to whatever color it is on top of. These geo symbols can be lifted, thrown, and be attacked slash destroyed. Multiple effects can be stacked onto one color as well. There is no limit. Now let's shift our gaze to the name of these pyramids. They are all called geo symbols, but the next word after it be a color or say null. 
These take effect when the Geo symbol is destroyed. If it is a color in the Geo panel name and it is destroyed while on top of colored panels, all panels of that color will turn into the color shown in the Geo symbol's name. Each panel will change color in sequence like this, and any character standing on a panel that changes color takes a bit of damage. If Null is in the Geo symbol's name and it is destroyed while on a colored panel, it will delete all of that colored panel from the map. Damage will still be taken by these panels going away as well. Yes, for those of you paying attention, you can change the changes that occur with these Geo symbols. And if you happen to clear all Geo panels, every enemy on the map will take damage, denoted by this zoom out and flash for your accomplishment. A few Geo symbol effects. Recovery 20%. Characters standing on this will recover 20% HP at the beginning of their next turn. Ally damage 50%. Characters will take 50% damage at the start of their next turn. This one hurts no matter how strong your characters are. Defense plus 50%. Characters will have their defense stat increased by 50%. No entry. Units cannot walk or move through spaces that have this effect. Magic range plus one. It makes all magic specials a character uses have one extra range. Warp. A character standing on this effect will be warped to a random panel that has the warp effect at the start of their next turn. When you finish a map, the results screen. You can see how much experience is acquired, mana acquired, how much experience and mana is being added to the juice bar, Hell acquired, and which characters earned experience and mana. You can see how much they each individually earned. Some characters will have a medal next to their name. They are the MVPs for this map, which means they earn bonus experience. The top three performing characters are MVPs. It is time for the meat. It is time for the entree. It is time for home base. You're likely to spend a fair bit of time thinking and contemplating how to equip and build your characters. You can move around in this space and rotate the camera. The camera controls are the same as mentioned in the basic controls section. Press B to jump. There are various shops to visit within the home base, labeled with some nice artwork in the name of their shop. Walk up to one and press A to check out their shop. If you do not want to walk to each shop, hold ZL or ZR to open a radio wheel. Then use the left stick to select a shop. You can also press A to confirm your choice, or simply let go of the left stick after it points to what you want. Press B to close the radio wheel. There are skits to discover. This guy's absurdity makes them fun. A quick description of these shop options, and I'll go over them in detail later. On ZL there is... General Store. This is where you purchase equipment and consumable items. Netherworld Hospital. Heal and revive your characters after missions. Data. Check all kinds of records such as items collected, spells unlocked, and more. Squad Shop. Place characters in squads for various bonuses. Quests. Accept and complete quests for a variety of rewards. Dark Assembly. Call an assembly of the Netherworld denizens to pass different builds that range from changing the controllable character within the base to unlocking new content. On ZR there is Dimension Guide. This is where you go to start missions for the story and unlockable content. Item World. In here, you can enter the world of one of your items to grow its strength. This is a randomly generated grinding hole. There's a lot of stuff here. Research. Send in your characters to research the item world of a specific item. Think of it as a automatic exploration of an item world without you going into it and fighting enemies yourself. And you can tell them to focus on finding certain items. Juice Bar. Use your hard and maliciously earned hell along with a few other currencies, to buy all manner of stats for your characters. Skill Shop. Enhance character specials and learn new abilities. Cheat Shop. Cheatingly change how many resources you earn via combat and a number of other options. Press X for the main menu. Your options are Characters. View all of your characters. You can have a multitude. And sort characters into groups. Let's look at the rest of the main menu options. I'll be back to characters very soon. Items. Check out all your items. You will get more than you know what to do with. Help. Refresh with tutorials and other information. Settings. The settings menu. I'll get into some specific options here later in the video. 
Save Menu. Save your game. Load, delete a save, and give up, which lets you go to the title screen. Now, back to characters. Select a character to reveal more options. Equipment. Change equipped items. Each character can be equipped with one weapon and three pieces of armor. Abilities. These are equipable passives. Each character has unique and common abilities. What these do vary greatly. Be sure to learn what new ones do. Status. View all stats. Demonic Intelligence. This is where you set up the AI for the auto battle. There are some pre-made options and you can make your own. I'll be going over each of these character options in detail over the course of the video, but for now I want to start with status. A quick overview of each tab. Status. See all of a character's stats. Abilities. View all a character's equipped abilities. Note you cannot change the equipped abilities here. You must use the previously shown abilities menu. Specials. The list of all specials for a character. Squad. The squad and allies that have been assigned to the same squad. Squads provide bonus effects to characters assigned to them. Class. View class proficiencies for each class for that character. This will be discussed later. Demerits. They are like achievements assigned to each character and gives you rewards upon completion. It is literally a separate list per character, but the demerits are the same. And Unit. View a little description of the character and some stats, like max damage the character has dealt and how many enemies they have defeated. You can even rotate the character model. Isn't Zed cute with that zombie heart? Hmm, kinda ironic. That is a key feature missing from a zombie. Or does he just have a big heart? Wink. Who is ready for numbers? Isn't this menu beautiful? I want to go over stats first because various mechanics and items facilitate these stats and may affect what stats you would like to prioritize. What is on this page? Character name, class, squad the character is in, portrait of the character with their level at the bottom, HP, SP, used for specials, base stats, attack increases damage for melee attacks and attack scaling specials. Defense decreases damage of melee attacks. Intelligence increases damage of magic attacks and int scaling specials. Resistance decreases damage of magic attacks. Hit increases accuracy of attacks and increases damage for hit scaling specials. Speed increases damage for speed scaling specials. Those are the basic stats. Now let's take a look at these. The boot. Move. This is the number of panels a character can move. The wing. Jump. The height level a character can jump up to without needing to be thrown or creating a path. The gun. Range. The attack range for a character is basic attack. This still varies depending on the weapon a character is using. Just because it says the range is 5, that will not always mean it is any 5 panels away from the character. For example, if a character is using a gun as a weapon, they can only fire in a straight line from them up to the number of spaces indicated by their range. The hand. Give them a high five before they throw you. This is the number of spaces the character can throw another character or object. The red arrow. Counter. This is how many times a character can counter. Yes, if a character gets attacked, they can counter multiple times. It looks like this. Counter. Counter, counter. Counter, counter, counter. Counter, 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 counter. Counter, 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 counter. Counter, 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 counter. The yellow splash hit symbol thing. Critical. This is the percent chance the character will land a critical hit, which will do extra damage. Down here is the equipment currently equipped. Resistance is in percents. See the percent sign in the parentheses? Fire, wind, water, and star are the elements. The character has a percent resistance to that element based on the number. You can also have a negative percent in resistance. In that case, the character will take that percent more damage from that element. Below the elements are resistances for each weapon type. They work the same way as the elements. Weapon Mastery. There is a symbol for each weapon type, and the last one is Armor. Weapon Mastery is twofold. There is the letter which shows which weapon the character favors. The higher the letter grade, the faster that character will gain mastery experience for the weapon. A character must use the weapon type in combat to gain experience towards its weapon mastery. The experience gain is indicated by this green bar. Once it fills, the mastery for that weapon goes up one level. 
The character gains stat bonuses for this weapon type per level when they are equipped with it. So, the higher the mastery level, the more stats the character gains from being equipped with that weapon type. The letter grades for weapon mastery from highest to lowest. S, A, B, C, D, E. And on the bottom, you can see the character's current mana and how much experience they need to reach the next level shown by Next EXP. Let's go over status ailments. Each status ailment lasts for the amount of turns indicated here on the ailments icon above a character's status window when hovered over. The symbol also appears flashing above the character's head, but you can't see the remaining turns here. Poison deals up to 20% of the unit's max HP and damage per turn. Sleep puts an enemy to sleep for a set number of turns. If hit while asleep, the attack will count as a critical hit. Paralysis prevents a character from taking an action, reduces their speed to 1, and they can't evade attacks. Amnesia prevents a character from using any skills and reduces their int stat to 1. Weaken prevents the character from earning experience and mana, as well as decreasing their stats by 30%. Charm makes a character attack its allies. As I said before, the Dimension Guide is where you choose story missions and newly unlocked missions. Let's go over what is on this screen. On the left is Netherworld. In Disgaea 6, these are different dimensions or worlds you travel to to progress the story. At the beginning of the game, there is simply one Netherworld, and as you progress, there will be more. On the right is a description of the highlighted Netherworld. Select the Netherworld. Now Netherworld has switched to Select Stage on the left. When you complete the first stage, another will become available until you have finished each stage within the Netherworld. At this point, a new Netherworld will unlock. Once the story is finished, things change a bit, but that discussion is for later. On the bottom right, we have some new information. Stage difficulty. This is the difficulty level for the map. If you look at the button key, there is a change difficulty option for L and R. And if you have already started this game and are thinking to yourself, well, that is not available for me, well, you are not wrong. So stay calm. This option only appears once you unlock the ability to use it. I'll talk about it later. Bonus rank. I did not know what this meant. It is clear I simply ignored it, but after doing some checking, I realized this number for bonus rank refers to the item rank of items received as rewards for said mission. Let me explain, and this will be brought up again during the equipment discussion. Gear in this game gets stronger through various methods, and one of them is item rank. Here's a piece of the item rank chart for this game lovingly created by Nitquit Wink. Honestly, no idea if I said that right. Over on Reddit. There is a link in the video description to the post with the full item rank chart. Now, look at item rank 1. For the fist weapon, the item's name is Thimble. This is the lowest rank fist weapon. As you go down the list, the item ranks increase, meaning the next item in the list will have greater base stats than the item before it. So essentially, the higher the item rank, the stronger the item. So, bonus rank is telling you which rank the items are that you can receive as rewards by completing the stage. This is referring to the rewards in the bonus gauge. Times cleared. This is how many times the stage has been beaten. Defeated. This is the total number of enemies that have been defeated clearing this stage. One time bonus. This tells you if the one-time bonus is available or not. This is the 9 option on a stage's bonus gauge. Remember the 9 item is a one-time reward. The same item will remain as the 9 reward until you have acquired it. After that, it becomes random like the rest of the bonus gauge. When doing missions, go to Other in the X menu. You can turn Auto on or off. This is for the auto battle. There is also Repeat on or off. This setting is for when the mission is completed. If on, it will automatically start the mission again. If both options are on, the game will auto-complete the mission until you tell it to stop. Time to go over specials. This is the list of specials for a character. You have the name of the special, its rank, this determines how strong it is overall, its experience bar here in green. Specials gain experience with each use. Prof, I'm assuming, is for proficiency. This goes up by one each time you fill the EXP bar. Increasing special proficiency lowers the SP cost of the special, 
and can increase its usable range if it is a spell like a heal or magic attack. Note, it takes multiple levels to increase the skill's range. SP is the SP cost to use the special. On the bottom of the screen is a description of the special. Now to the box to the right. Power is how much extra damage the special does. Stat. This is the stat that affects this special's strength. Element. The element associated with this special. Ailment. If the special can apply a status ailment, its symbol will be here. Range. This is the number of panels the special can reach. If it is zero, that means it only works in melee range, so adjacent to the character. Height. This special can be used on a target that is up to this DM above the character, and up to this DM below the character. Remember you can see the DM, the elevation, on the right side of the screen while in a map. This grid is a top-down visual representation of the range of a special. The blue panel indicates the panel that must be on top of the target to hit the target, while the red panels are the area you can move the blue panel or panels within. The green triangle is the character using the special. In the case of when there are no red panels, the character itself can be rotated to change the direction of their special. Do check special descriptions. Some have a knockback effect and can cause you to unintentionally move enemies during your attack setup. This knockback is not represented on a special's grid information. You will also notice some specials do not show a grid, like Espoir. These specials use a different shop, a different metric to gauge both their range and area of effect. Before I get into that, there are different symbols for different types of specials. The staff for generic type magic, the sword for unique specials to the specific character, a heart for healing specials, and this green magic circle thing for specials that provide buffs or some other type of positive effect. This green number on the special symbol is its enhance level. I'll get to this in a moment. You can organize your skills. Press Y and then Y on a different skill to switch them. You can also press A to lock the skill during battle. This makes the skill not show up in your list when selecting a special to use. To the skill shop, a quick overview of each option, then the details. Enhance skill. Increase or decrease the strength of a special and change the area of effect of various magic specials. Learn ability. Select a character to learn new abilities. Convert ability. Remove a character's ability to gain its mana cost. Create scroll. Pay the mana cost of a character's ability to create a scroll of it that can be given to another character. Enhance skill. What is visible in this menu? Let's start at the top. Mana. This is the currency spent to enhance specials. Mana is earned by fighting and completing maps. The name of the currently highlighted special. Mana used is the mana necessary to do an upgrade. The skill proficiency for the special. This is the prof number. Hey, I was correct. It's current enhance level. This enhance level and this plus 63 on Thunder Rush are the same thing. Power, the strength of the special and SP used for the special. The numbers to the right of its current values are the new numbers after the upgrade. The character you're on is displayed here. This is the list of all the character's specials. If they happen to have a long list, you can filter by physical specials and magic. The typical special info is here on the right. Select a physical special, Enhance Power. This option spends your mana to increase the power of the special, along with how much SP it costs to use. Select how many levels you want to increase it by. Watch all the numbers go up with each level. Do try not to level your special so much the character can't afford the SP cost though. Look, the SP cost has already gone over double its original amount. Weaken Power. Use this option to decrease the level of the special. If you realize you upgraded a bit too much, lower it. This costs no mana to do, but you will also not be refunded the mana that was spent for the levels initially. You'll get to a point where you really will not need to worry about that loss. Enhance Proficiency. Increase the level of the skill proficiency. Reminder, increasing this lowers the SP cost of the special. Select a magic special. There is a new option, enhance range. Pay mana to give the spell a new area of effect variant. You can see them all here under magic range. Each of these must be unlocked in order. You do not get to pick which ones you want. If you want level six, you must purchase all the previous levels. 
In combat, when you select a magic special, you can choose from all of its unlocked AoE types. Note, each higher level AoE type costs more SP. Go into combat and check the different SP costs for each AoE type. Keep the increased SP costs in mind while upgrading. They can also be rotated using the X button. Just don't forget, you can hit your allies. Learn Evility Convert Evility and Create Scroll are all related to Evilities. So let's take a look at what Evilities are first. Select a character in the Characters menu. Then select Evilities. These are passive abilities for a character. They are unique and common Evilities. The description of the Evility is at the bottom of the screen. Each Ability also has a cost to equip it. The total amount of Abilities and cost is totaled for you here at the top. There is a separate cost for unique and common abilities, so be sure to pay attention to an ability's cost. Some of them are quite pricey, costing 4 or 5 points. There are so many different types of abilities that you can actually set ability loadouts. Press Y. You can save up to 10 preset ability loadouts. A couple of easy examples of what you might want to save. You can have a loadout meant for leveling and increasing the stat growth rate of the character, if you know you're going into a tough fight and want as much stats or strength as possible, you'll have an ability set that helps increase a character's damage or survivability. There are plenty more reasons than just these two. Unfortunately, you can't name the loadouts, but you can see the list of abilities on the left. Use that as a reminder as to which set is which. Back to the skill shop. Learn Ability. This option lets you spend mana to purchase abilities. You can end up with a long list of options. Note, unique abilities are not acquired from the shop. It only sells abilities that will be equipped to the common ability slots. A few examples. Vaccines give immunity to specific status ailments. Blessings to increase damage with a specific element. The powers and each with a different color. If the character is standing on that geo panel color, they get a percent stat increase. Tutors and coaches increase a character's weapon mastery grade. Then there are the Guy series of abilities. They increase the growth rate of a specific stat by a set percentage, and stronger versions of these abilities can be discovered. And because Disgaea is Disgaea, which is amazing, there is Buxom Bulwark. It increases the defense of the character by 30%. If the unit is bodaciously busty. There are even more wacky abilities like this one. These abilities I've mentioned are universal and appear for every character. You can also create your own characters in Disgaea. I'll get into the details later, but I wanted to mention these curated characters have abilities that are unique to their class, and it is possible to unlock them for other characters. This is related to increasing class proficiency on a character. The unique story characters also have their own abilities they can learn. Be sure to look at the learnable abilities for story characters and created characters because some of them are quite powerful and allow for some crazy combinations. Move the left stick left or right, or press the left and right d-pad buttons to filter abilities by type. If you'd like to know the full list of abilities, check the video description. Convert Ability Here you can refund an ability to gain the mana listed next to it. If your list of abilities is too long or you're finding some of them redundant, Remove it from the list. As an example, Tough Guy. There are multiple types for this one that give different HP growth rates. Yes, if you would like, you can stack these on a single character. Do know once you convert an ability into mana, you cannot undo the choice. You have to go back to the Learn Ability option to relearn it if it was an ability that was initially learnable for that character. This Convert Ability option can be useful during the story. There are moments when a character will learn random abilities and you may not want them, so it's a chance to gain some extra mana for free without having to fight stuff. These random abilities are earned through Super Reincarnation, I will talk about that later. Create Scroll. Here you can pay the mana cost to create a scroll of that ability. You then use that scroll on another character and they will learn that ability. Note this creates a copy, so the original character will still have the ability. This even works with abilities that are only learned by certain classes or characters. If creating scrolls like this feels broken to you, yes, yes it is. That is what this guy is all about. Read explanation. Read description of each skill shop option. The general store. 
buy and sell items. Pay attention to your hell and the cost of items in various shops you will use or see. Stuff can get expensive quite easily early on. This total amount here is showing the amount of items you currently have. There is a cap of 2,000 items you can have at a time. If your inventory is full, all items received after that will automatically be sold. Be sure to keep up with your inventory if you don't want to lose out on newly acquired items due to the inventory being full. Product Rank This goes up as new items become available in the shop. Customer Rank This goes up by buying and selling items at the shop. This will make items cheaper and sell for more. New items appear in the shop as you progress the story and by passing the Better Items at the Store bill in the Dark Assembly. Since I'm going over the general store, let's also go over all the weapons and how they work. Note, weapons work differently when using the attack command based on the type of weapon, but do not affect specials. Equipped weapons can change what stat specials use to calculate their damage though. Fists. These increase the attack and speed stats when equipped. Fists have a base range of 1 and allow for one counter attack if the character is hit. Of course, the enemy has to be adjacent can't punch someone two panels away. Swords. They only increase the attack stat when equipped. They also have a range of one for the attack command. Melee range only. Spears. They increase the attack and defense stats when equipped and have a range of two. Spears can attack up to two panels away. It can also hit multiple enemies at a time. If there are two enemies in a line, look at the top left. It shows the attack will affect two targets. If you select an adjacent enemy or an enemy at a diagonal, the spear will only hit that enemy. Bows. They increase the attack and hit stats. Bows come with a range of 4. This range can be increased with other mechanics. Guns. They increase the hit and speed stats and have the longest base range at 5, but they have a catch. Guns can only attack in a straight line. In other words, a plus sign. Axes. These increase attack but decrease hit and speed. They have a range of 1. The axe is where the big damage is, or you just love axes. There are ways to offset the hit and speed loss if you would like to do that. I'll be mentioning a few of those after all the weapons. Stabs. Increase the intelligence and resistance stats. This is the weapon your magic users will generally be using. They have a range of 2. Their basic attack will only hit the chosen panel. Now for the defensive equipment. Every character can equip 3 armor pieces. These three pieces can be from any of the following item types I'm about to mention. In any amount. Armor. These increase the defense and resistance stats. There is one more tab after armor. This has a few different item types within it. The first is belts. These increase attack. Shoes increase speed. Teeth. I, I don't know why something classified as teeth raises speed. And glasses increase intelligence and hit. Consumables. Purchase all types of consumable items like ABC gum. If you don't know what the ABC means, please look it up and regret that you did. For those that know what the ABC means, if you use a different gum item and then go look at your consumables, you will notice it has been replaced by ABC gum. The candy and other desserts here recover HP. Hmm, that's not very specific because how much HP? Remember to always look at an item's stats to the right. Any stat changes it provides will be listed in detail, so ABC Gum will recover 25,000 HP. These red bottles all recover SP, which is consumed when using specials. Last is Fairy Dust, which cures any status ailment. There are more consumable items than this, but those serve other uses. The ETC, etc. tab for the store contains items you usually can't purchase, at least not from the general store. Look to the item world for purchasable items within this tab. If we move over to the items list, there are fillers, divers, Mr. Genzi exits, and a few other items. Fillers increase the bonus gauge. Remember the bonus gauge when doing main story maps? Use these to fill it for you. Note there are multiple fillers that raise the gauge by different amounts. Divers and Mr. Genzi exits are for the item world. Divers let you skip floors, and Mr. Genzi exits let you exit the item world whenever you want. More details on these two items in the item world discussion. Items like speakers, medicine, and bombs are for the Dark Assembly. They help you coerce or change the minds of members of the Dark Assembly to help you get your bills passed. There are more than what you can see here, but I'll go over them when I get to the Dark Assembly. The Sold tab. If you sell an item to the store, 
go back to this tab to repurchase it in case of those little accidents. That little slip of the finger. Allow me to divert your eyes to the button key at the bottom. The Y button for Try On. Use this to check what stat changes your character will have with the equipped item. The item that is being tried on appears in the slot it is to be equipped to. If the cursor is moved down to an armor slot, my selected weapon does not appear since it can't be equipped there. Also, for my attentives out there, have you noticed some other differences with the weapons? There is a level on these pieces of equipment, their names are flash and green, and you can see... Same bonus in use. The level is the amount of levels the item has gained from your progress in the item's item world. I'll go over the item world later, but let's go back to the general store for just a moment. Some items here also have a level. When leveling an item through the item world, it affects items here in the store. If you level a mysterious blade, the highest level you have achieved on a mysterious blade will then be sold in the shop permanently. Just remember all weapons here are base versions with no rare points. Also, this does not apply to other versions of weapons like Carnage versions, for example. Carnage has to do with post-game, so that will be discussed near the end of the video. Now for the other two things I mentioned. The item names flashing in a different color and same bonus in use. The name of the item in green means it is a rare item. The item's rarity can be seen here on its stats page. You can also see item names in yellow, meaning they are legend rarity, which is higher rarity than rare. When items of similar rarity are equipped together, the character gets an even further stat boost. This is the same bonus in use message. To see how item rarity and other aspects affect an item's stats, check the video description. There is no bonus for common items. There are four rarities for items. Common, Rare, Legend, and Epic. Which rarity an item is, is determined by its rare number. Common is 0 to 24. Rare, 25 to 49, Legend, 50 to 99, and Epic is 100. Move the right stick left or right to change which parts of the stats window is being shown. Page 3 shows you the stat changes for the currently highlighted equipment. The plus sign with blue numbers, it's blue this time, is an increase, and a minus sign with red numbers is a decrease in stats. There is another detail I have not made mention of. These items have a pink tint to their icons, while the ones in the shop looked more normal in color. This is due to a change that comes once you beat the story. These are the carnage items I mentioned earlier. The pop, or population number. An item's population number is tied to the item's rarity. The higher the rarity, the higher the population. An item's population and innocence are like NPCs that live within the item, that provide it extra stats. Different innocents increase various stats or provide other bonuses. The population number is how many innocents can be housed within the item. Innocents will be discussed in a bit. When selecting a new piece of equipment, the four stat pages from before are now split into two windows. You still use the right stick to switch them, but it alternates which ones get switched. Weird choice. They should have just left it the same, but it does take up more screen real estate this way. Before we move on from equipment, in the general store, the equipment here is listed in item rank order. Remember this chart I showed you earlier while talking about the dimension guide? So as you unlock new equipment within the store, know the further you scroll this list, the higher the item's rank is, so it has higher base stats. The items menu from the main menu. You've already seen this filter in previous clips, and you will continue to see it in more places, so let's go over this now. Most of it is self-explanatory. Move the left stick or D-pad left or right to move the filter. You can filter to specific weapon types and armor. You can see the name of the tab here at the top. The option after armor is accessories, where all the shoes, glasses, etc. go. There is also a different item type here, emblems. They raise all stats by the same amount. HP and SP are raised by the same amount. After those is the consumables tab, for all your restoratives. Next is etc. Fillers, Divers, Mr. Gen Z Exits, and Dark Assembly items are here. Secret Scrolls tab. The scrolls for all your learnable abilities and specials. Wait a moment. It says for the Heal scroll, it teaches the Ability Heal and then Special Skills in parentheses. Actually, it says Ability no matter what scroll it is. 
Look at what it says in parentheses to know if the scroll is for a special or ability. I never noticed this before. It would be nice if you did not have to wait for the scrolling text. Give me a window with all the text, please. The next tab is Favorites. Add an item to Favorites by pressing the minus button. Pay attention to your button key. I still don't always do this, but that will not stop me from telling you multiple times in every video. The Lock tab is the last one. Lock items by selecting an item in your item list and choosing the Lock option. This will prevent you from selling the item even if you select it while at a shop. Use Favorites and Lock to help separate items to help you find what you want more quickly. Okay, I told you I don't pay attention to button keys in games sometimes. I didn't notice this next one. Press the right stick button. There is a filter. You can set a value for HP, SP, and all stats to filter items that have these numbers. Once your numbers are set, press Y to enable or disable the filter for each specific stat. The name of the stat highlights white if it is enabled and is darkened if it is disabled. Another detail about weapons you can see here. Hover over an item to see its appearance. The sad part is fist weapons have no model. Please, Disgaea, put actual fist weapons on characters' fists. Please! The item world! Where you will likely spend a good amount of your time. There are a lot of things here. Let's go through a short explanation of each option then get more specific. Go to Item World. Choose any item from your inventory to enter a procedurally generated series of maps to increase the stats of the item. Enhance Item. Spend item points to increase aspects of an item, such as its stats, rarity, change its name, and more. Innocent Exchange. Spend item points to purchase specific types of innocence. Innocence can be equipped to items to increase their stats or add other bonuses. Point Exchange. Sell items or innocence in exchange for item points. Another way to get rid of those unwanted items if you don't want to sell them for hell. You can also change your item auto sell option to item points here in the cheat shop. Manage innocence. Add or remove innocence from your items. Last is the innocent farm. Place innocence in the farm to have their power grow and give birth to new innocence. Time for the specifics. Let's take it from the top. Go to Item World. From this menu, select an item to visit its Item World. The Item World is procedurally generated maps with various enemies, innocence, geopanels, events, level spheres, and more surprises. When selecting an item, you can see what floor you will be starting on and its resident level. This is simply the level range enemies will be at. As you progress through the floors, the enemies' levels will increase. There is a way to manipulate what level enemies are in the Item World but this involves the cheat shop. It will be discussed later. Every single item has its own item world. Do note whichever item you pick. Its stats will increase with each floor you clear. Also, resident levels can vary quite a lot even among like-named items due to the item's current level. Be sure to check it. Now, let's enter an item world. Everything is as usual with the exception of this window here. Item World Info. This is a reminder of which item's item world you're in, how many levels the item will earn upon exit of the item world, and which floor you're on. Each floor of the item world also has its own bonus gauge. These rewards are randomized. The level of the item goes up by one for each cleared floor. Clear a floor by placing one of your characters on the purple skip gate, or defeat all enemies on the floor. The skip gate can sometimes have an enemy on it, and other times, it will not. As you progress, you may see level spheres. Destroy these before clearing the floor to gain one level to your item per level sphere destroyed on that floor. As you progress through the item world, level spheres will start rewarding more than one level. There may also be chests with items. Innocents appear. They and the residents of each floor don't get along, and they'll fight each other. Be sure to defeat the innocents yourself if you want to add them to your innocent collection. Note, acquiring a defeated innocent requires the current item to have open population slots. If you enter the item world for an item, and its population slots are full, and innocents are defeated, they will not be acquired. Geopanels can appear as well. Sometimes a yellow gate appears. These are event gates. If you enter it and complete the event, bonus levels are added to your item. 
There are multiple events, and some are not painfully obvious with what you're supposed to do. I will not directly tell you what the events are. I'll leave them for you to discover. But if you really must know, there is a list of all events in the video description. This next piece of information is very important about the item world. If you choose to give up, then return to base or return to the title screen, you will lose all levels and progress from your item world run. If you select return to base, the game does warn you with the message, lose battle progress and return to base. It even automatically makes the initial selection no. You must manually change it to yes. Return to the title screen only asks if you want to return to the title screen. Retry and return to stage selection can't be selected. You must leave the item world through the correct means to keep your progress. There are two ways. You choose to leave the item world once you reach Innocent Town or use a Mr. Jensi exit. Innocent Town appears after every 10 floors. Clear the 10th floor and you are in Innocent Town. The 10th floor will always have a boss enemy. The guide in the center lets you return to base. Keep going, so continue going through more floors. And nothing lets you stay in Innocent Town. The NPC to the right is the Item World General Store. He sells random stuff you likely won't find in the regular General Store. But make your purchase while the store is open, because once you close it, you cannot reopen the store. It's a one-time store. Last is the Item World Hospital. Heal your characters before moving on. A detail about the Item World Hospital. The hospital here in Innocent Town requires you pay for the heals with health, whereas the Item World Hospital in your base does not even have a heal option, since all characters are healed automatically or free when returning to the base. You can see how much hell healing a specific character is on the right, and you can press Y to heal everyone, and the total hell cost is at the bottom with Heal All. Press X to change the HP values to the SP values. It is not a separate cost to heal HP and SP. It is just a nice way to view how much HP and SP characters have remaining in a huge list. I'm telling you right now, do not pay for the heals from the Innocent Town Hospital. Just talk to the guide, return to base, and then go back. If you find this process of talking to the guide and re-entering the item world tedious, there is an option in the cheat shop on page 2. Skip Innocent Towns. Turn this on to make the item world skip all Innocent Towns. So the guide in Innocent Town is one of the proper ways to leave the item world to keep your progress. And as I said, Mr. Jensi Exit is the other. You can get free Mr. Jensi Exits. You are rewarded one from the bonus gauge every 10th floor. This will be the floor with the boss. When you step on the panel to move to Innocent Town, you will receive the Mr. Jensi exit. Note I did not say you needed to defeat the boss or any other enemies. Just clear the floor and you will be given a Mr. Jensi exit for the zero option on the bonus gauge. Innocent Town is effectively unnecessary unless you want to purchase items from the randomized one-time shop or would like breaks in your item world adventure because you have auto battle on and you would like to make sure all your units do not die while you're not looking. When you go back to base, you get the results screen. You can see floors cleared, current level of the item when you entered, how many level ups earned, and bonus levels earned. These are from events and some other extras. Defeated info. The first one is current kill bonus. This increases the stats of the item by a percentage. This percentage ranges from 1 to 2 times in increase in stats. 2 times being the highest stat increase an item can receive from the current kill bonus. This number is calculated with defeated enemies. Take the level of the defeated enemy and it gets added to the total. This is not something most players will want to focus on. Leave it for post game. Training bonus. This goes up by 1 for each item world boss that is defeated, and 1 for each event completed. The game will also give you a message saying what you did counted toward the bonus as you move through the item world. Pop bonus. This bonus goes up by 1 when you defeat an innocent while the item has an open innocent slot or slots. Any innocents defeated beyond the item's current population maximum will not appear on the pop bonus. So go into item worlds with items that have no innocents equipped, or remove innocents from the item first. For the nitty-gritty details of how these things affect an item's stats, 
there is a link to a guide in the video description. Enhance item. Increase stats and other aspects of your items with item points. Increase a stat by a little, a normal amount, a lot, a ton, or a ton again. And you can increase things like jump power, attack range, movement range, etc. And for these options, you can see how much it is increased by in the description at the bottom of the screen. The total item points you have are on the right, and do pay attention to how many points are needed for each enhancement. As you would imagine, the higher the cost in points for the stat increase options, the more the stat will increase. Before we go into the innocent focused menus, let's go over what innocents do for your characters. The number for an innocent is its power. The stat that is described at the bottom of the screen is increased by the innocent's power. This is a one-to-one -one situation, unless it says otherwise in the innocent's description. This coach innocent increases the speed stat when on an item. Its power is 65,422, so the item's speed stat will be increased by this amount. Statistician's effect is increasing the experience gained by innocent value percent. Its power is 900. If this is equipped to an item, the character equipped with that item will receive 900% more experience points. Sadly, this innocent type does not stat, so it will only count one equipped statistician. You can't have a single character gaining 1800% more experience by equipping two, even if they are equipped to different items. It is a hard cap of 900 power for this innocent. For a list of all stat caps for each innocent type, check the video description. Innocent Exchange Purchase innocence with item points. Little people to inhabit your items for your benefit. I hope you feel good about yourself. Well, beating them into submission isn't really any better. Some innocents increase a specific stat, add an ailment to your attacks, like poison and sleep, increase resistance to an ailment or element, and some increase how much experience, mana, etc. a character will earn. When purchasing an innocent here, you can set its strength. The number selected will be the innocent's power. The points used is how much each point of power costs in item points. Point exchange. Sell your items or innocents for item points. Here on the right, you can see your current item points. Total points is the total number of points of all items you want to sell. Press Y to select various items to sell them all at once. A green check mark will appear for selected items. Feel free to switch tabs as well. Just remember the game will not undo selections when switching tabs, but will undo all selections if you exit this menu. Exchange points is how many points the currently highlighted item is worth. It seems there are multiple factors that determine an item's value in item points, but the aspect that has the biggest impact is the item's rarity number. The higher the item's rarity number, the more points it is worth. Innocence can also be sold for item points. They don't sell for as much as items generally. Manage Innocence In this menu, you can remove or add innocence to your items. On the right is the Innocent Warehouse list. Take innocence from your items and store them in the warehouse then move them from the warehouse to the selected item. Press A to select an item. Use the left stick or D-pad to select an innocent and press A again to remove it. Press L1 or R1 to switch between the item's innocent list and the warehouse. Select an innocent from the innocent warehouse section to add it to the item. Be aware there is a cap to how many innocents you can have, stated by the pop number. When in the warehouse, you can filter between the different types of innocents. Move the left stick left or right, or press the left or right D-pad buttons. You will notice some differences between the innocent icons. Innocents will have this red icon, or a yellow smiley face, and some have a star while others do not. Each of these is important when managing innocents. Let's move to the last item world option to talk about these. The Innocent Farm. The setup is the same as Manage Innocents, but instead of an innocent warehouse, it is the Innocent Farm. Place innocents in the farm to grow their power, and new innocents can even be born. These two things occur automatically as you play the game. If trying to produce a new innocent, be sure to leave a slot open because only so many innocents can be placed within the innocent farm. Use the innocent farm squad to increase how many innocents can be placed within the farm. As you play the game, a message will pop up saying a new innocent has been born. As a reminder, go play the game to progress the innocent farm whether that be the item world or playing missions in the dimension guide. 
Eventually, an innocent in the farm will get a star on its icon. The star means its power is capped. It will go no higher. This works the same whether an innocent has the red icon or the yellow smiley face. But there is a key difference between these two icons. The yellow icon innocents can be fused together if they are of the same type. When in the Manage Innocence window, while the cursor is in the Innocent Warehouse, press the minus button. It will fuse all fusible innocents, adding their power together. You are prompted by this message to make sure you want to fuse. The red icon innocents can't be fused. The red icon innocents are the ones you will see the most. The innocents purchased in the Innocent Exchange are the red icon ones and will be on plenty of items you collect through the item world. The yellow icon innocents are earned through the item world. They are the innocents you must subdue by defeating them. When birthing new innocents, it is possible to get both red or yellow icon ones. Be sure to throw some yellow innocents into the farm if you're looking to get more of them. Whew. Item world done. To the juice bar. The juice bar lets you drink your way to all the stats of your dreams. At the top is your current health. To the right is the current stock. This is a list of all experience and extracts you have available to use. You will be seeing these again in a moment. Select Have a Drink. There are three different tabs for different stats to raise. Use L or R to switch between them. The Status tab lets you raise all basic stats. The Class Proficiency tab lets you raise the proficiency for a character within a specific class. I'll be going over why you'd want to do this later within the Dark Assembly discussion. But for now, know it lets you get certain abilities. And in the case of created characters, they will learn new specials. Last is the Weapon Mastery tab. Raise a Weapon Mastery of your choice. As a reminder of what this does, increasing this level gives percent increases to the stats received when the character is equipped with that weapon type. So it is a bonus to the attack stats received from an equipped sword, as an example. On the status tab, the window on the left is your current stats, and directly to the right is what the enhanced stat will be. Move the left stick or d-pad up or down to select a stat, and move the left stick or d-pad left or right to change the value. The changed value will also be in blue in the enhanced window. On the top right is how much hell you have, and hell spent is the total hell that will be spent for the stat changes you set. Stored EXP and used EXP. The currency you spend to increase your stats will be listed here. Note, there are different currencies depending on what stat you want to increase. Adding extra character levels uses stored EXP. Increasing mana uses stored mana. And increasing any of the base stats uses extracts of that stat. Stored EXP and stored mana is earned by just playing the game. Portions of the experience or mana your characters earn will go to the juice bar. There is another way to earn stored EXP. Super Reincarnation. I'll go over this briefly as I'll go over it more later. When reincarnating a character, their level is set back to 1, and the growth rate of their stats increases. And the EXP they earned is now added to your stored EXP. If you think getting your levels back will be difficult, keep watching this video as I peel back the layers. This guy is about grind, and it gives you the tools you need. For the different stat extracts, there are multiple ways to gain them. Demerits is going to be the main one for a while. Go to Characters. Select a character and then select Status. Go to Demerits. These are all milestones that every character you have has, and they are the same for every character. And there are other awards for these as well. Extracts is one of them. Defeat a set number of enemies and raise any stat over these values, reward extracts. Notice it says, of each extract, so you will gain this amount of extracts per stat type. Gain extracts from quests in the quest shop. Quests will have the purple juice bar symbol in the reward section to help identify them. Extracts can also be earned from item world research, one of the facilities I have not talked about yet. If you do not want to increase each of these stats one at a time, there are buttons you can hold to move the stat in increments of 10, 100, and 1000. Also, if you hold the button or buttons, it will incrementally increase the stat by bigger and bigger numbers. ZR and ZL will increase a stat to its maximum or minimum, respectively. Class Proficiency and Weapon Mastery both use Stored EXP. The Quest Shop accept various quests and review quests you've already accepted. Quests can reward you Hell, Mana, Scrolls, new characters you can create, and more. Accept quests. 
Select a quest from the quest list. On the right, view the goal for the quest. Target item is what needs to be acquired or turned in to complete the quest. Number needed is how many you will need. Some quests will require defeating a certain type of enemy, clearing a stage multiple times, and more. Under reward is the reward for finishing the quest. Press L or R to read the text that comes with each quest to add a little more flavor to your questing. Quests can be a good way to get some resources earlier in the game. Review quests. You can filter between pending quests and completed quests. In pending quests, a quest can have a green check mark next to it. This means the quest is complete and is waiting for the turn-in. Select it and choose Conclude Quest to get your reward, or select Abandon Quest if you want to remove a quest from this list. Press the minus button to view reportable quests. It filters the list to all turn-in ready quests. Quests with a white name are repeatable quests, meaning they can appear again as acceptable quests once finished. Green name quests are one-time quests. Once cleared, they will not show up again. The item Research Squad, or just Research, as it is called within the base. Here you can send your units off to research the item world of items instead of doing it yourself. Select a vacant slot and research. On the left is your list of items, and on the right we have a window displaying item information. The name of the item that has been a tad horizontally squished. The usual info of level, rare number, and population. Enemy encounter rate is how often your units will have to fight item world denizens. Enemy level is the level of enemies. Be sure to select units that are around enemy level during your research. It does affect their ability to win fights. Acquired item info. Acquire rate is how often your units will retrieve items, and rank limit is the rank of items that can be found. You can't select currently equipped items for research. Once you select an item, you choose crew members for the research party. Select units from your character list. Use L or R to switch between the character list and crew members. When on crew members, you can remove characters with A or press Y to remove all. Press the plus button to start the expedition. Choose the research topic. What do you want your expedition crew to prioritize? Enhancements for the item to make it more powerful? Seek items. Gather as many new items as possible to use or sell. Gather innocence. Get more innocence to raise or equip to items. Gather essence. Grind out some essence, also known as extracts, for the juice bar. Choose as many of these options as you want. Just make sure the red check mark is there and depart. This confirmation window shows up, warning all crew members will not be able to participate in battle while on their expedition. Build extra characters to use for research so you aren't left defenseless during your own item world dives or story missions. Now, go do other stuff, and then go back to research. You can view the floor the team has made it to and their current status. Select the squad. You can choose to bring them home or view progress report. Bring squad home stops their expedition and you require all items they found. You also get the details of their expedition. There is a breakdown of what happened, who they fought, how many days have passed, any defeats the team had, and all items and resources they found. Press B to close the expedition results window. This will not end the research. Press A with this window open to end their research early. If a squad is left to research for long enough, the expedition will end on its own. You just have to call the research team back. Now you get a list of all acquired items. Select which ones you would like to add to your inventory. Any items that were not selected will automatically be sold. Press Y to select or deselect an item. The minus button will select or deselect all items, and the plus button confirms all selections. If any innocents were found, it will also ask you to select which ones you want. This works the same as with the item selection. The difference here is if an innocent is not selected, it will be released. You can't sell innocents for hell. Now, your characters are free to be set on a new expedition, or they can be used in combat as normal. Your expedition characters do gain resources like experience from expeditions as well. View progress report lets you look at the expedition breakdown without calling the party back home. The Netherworld Hospital. Heal your characters. This is no ordinary hospital. Notice how there is no heal me now button at first glance. The only option is claim prize. This is because in the netherworld, they like to incentivize you to go out there and cause havoc. The game tracks how much HP and SP has been healed, along with revivals. Your current health is displayed on screen too. Netherworld healthcare is not free. Well, technically it is within the base, and it happens automatically when returning to base. But the Item World Hospital has a new option, Get Treated. 
This is because you have to pay hell to heal your characters. It shows both their HP and SP. Press X to change between the two. There is a number representation and the colored bar. If a character's numbers are white and there is an amount of hell listed, there is health or SP that can be recovered. If gray and a zero, their HP and SP are full. You can scroll through all your characters. Below the character list, you can press Y to heal all characters, and it automatically totals how much hell that will cost. Select Claim Prize. As you hit milestones on how much healing you've done, you can receive the specified item as a reward. The Claim Prize button for the Netherworld Hospital and Itemworld Hospital are one and the same. They share rewards, so this list will be the same for both. Oh yes, the Dark Assembly. This thing is cool. Call together the Senators of the Netherworld to pass bills for your benefit, uh, usually. The only menu option is Call Assembly. Notice some characters' names are red. This just means that the character is on a research mission, but you can still choose them for bills. Now select any character you want. There are some bills that will affect the chosen character. Only the mana from the selected character will be spent to start a vote for a bill. The character chosen, or presenter, listed here with how much mana they have, and then success rate. This is the percent chance the Senators of the Dark Assembly will pass your bill. Under this is the proposal list, the list of all bills you can choose from. Let's go over some of them briefly, then really dig into the important ones. Mana used is how much mana must be paid to propose the bill. Just remember paying the mana cost does not mean it will succeed. The Senator list. Take a look at all senators who could be voting on your bills. Create new character. It is literal. Create a new character. Choose from any of these classes. There are even more to unlock and they learn their own unique abilities and abilities. Delete a character. Delete characters from your character list. Change colors. Get new color schemes to change the color palette of your characters. Some of these bills also have no success rate, so use them as much as you want. The Senators do not need to vote on them. Better items at the store. You'll see this a few times as you progress the story. It adds new stronger items to the general store. Change controllable character. Change the character you run around as in the base. There are even bills that increase EXP earned, funnel all experience to a single character, etc. Be sure to read the description of the bill. As for the experience ones, give me triple EXP. It triples the experience earned on the next map so it only works for the one map. Then if you want the bonus again, pass the bill again. Hog All EXP is an example of a bill that affects the chosen character. On the next map, all EXP earned will go to the character you passed the bill with. Explode like crazy. Multiply the range of the first ally explosion on the next map by five. It is a weird one. I'll let you figure out what to use it for. You might even find a moment during this video where the solution slaps you in the face. I need more war funds. Take hell from all the Dark Assembly Senators. Look at the description. Will surely be denied with a success rate of 1%. I want a trophy. Pass a bill to get a trophy, whatever that means. There are many more bills than this and many situational ones. Figure out your own strats with what bills to pass. There are also bills that only appear after you beat the story. Yes, there is post-game stuff to do. I'll talk about post-game a bit near the end of the video. Back to the top. Senator list. You can see their name, level, how many times they attended the assembly, how many times you have defeated them in battle, I'll get to this, and how much they support you. Blue words are good and red words are bad. More specifically, they are love, total support, Strong for, leaning yes, in favor of, either way, leaning no, strongly against, total opposition, loathes. Below the character list is the party affiliation of this senator and an item they prefer. A senator's party affiliation is simply their class. The item they prefer is telling you what bribes they would like. Give items to senators to bribe them to vote for what you want. At the very bottom, you can see what tier the senator is. This also correlates to their level. The higher the tier, the stronger the senator, and the more weight their vote holds towards bills. Create new character. Make another character from a selection of classes. You start the game with only a few and unlock others. 
If you do not want to be spoiled on what classes look like, please skip this section of the video. I'm going to highlight a few of the early ones you get after the explanation. After you select Create New Character, it is time for you to select a class. You can see a graph of the class's stat growth rates. The more the green area is moved to a specific stat, the more stat points are added to that stat as the character levels. The typical stats are here as well. Movement, Jump, Range, Throw, Counter, and Critical, Elemental and Weapon Resistances, and Weapon Mastery. Below these stats, you can see the name of the class and rank for the class. Press X to switch between the class's rank and unique ability, although you can't see what the ability does from this window. See these stars? As a character is used in combat, they gain class proficiency. Remember class proficiency can be viewed here, under the class tab of a character's status window. These stars will begin to fill in color as the character gains more class proficiency, and once it is filled, the character's rank goes up one star. Increase class proficiency by using the character, and you could just use the juice bar. There is a difference between unique characters and created characters in the class tab. First, the unique characters. Set a class to them by moving the pointer and press A. The class name will highlight yellow when selected. As the class proficiency chosen goes up, the character will be able to learn the abilities from that class at the skill shop. Once the proficiency is mastered, the character will gain that class's unique ability, the one listed here in character creation. For the created characters, their class proficiency cannot be changed from the class tab. Notice the set button for A in the button key is grayed out. But, once their base class has been capped out, they can. Raising class proficiency increases the character's stat growth rates, and each class learns its own set of abilities. At each new proficiency level, be sure to check the skill shop for the new ones. New abilities will be at the top. Back to the Create New Character window. When class proficiency gains a new star, the character's rank name changes, its stat growth goes up, the character unlocks a new color palette, and pay attention. Weapon mastery can change with new class ranks as well. It varies based on the class. Six stars is the highest proficiency a class can reach. Select the class. Now, choose a name. You can input one manually or let the game randomly generate one. They range from simple to... What did you just call me? Press the plus button to confirm your purchase... I, I mean name. Capability type. Choose how capable the character is. Depending on which you pick changes how much karma the character gains and how much mana is used. You'll see what karma is for as we go through the rest of this process. Let's choose Genius. A character's capability can also be seen here on the right under Job Requirements. Raising stats here does have a cap. Once this stats bar fills, the stat can't be raised anymore via this method. Spoiler, there is a way to increase the cap here. I will be mentioning it soon. You can see their name, capability, level, and ability. This ability is unique to the class. Element Forte, personality, and color will be seen in a moment. Then you have the basic stats for the character and a bonus column. Unlock capability. Spend karma to increase basic stats. The amount of karma you have is at the top right, as well as karma spent. Increase a stat by using the left stick or d-pad. How much karma is needed per bonus stat can be seen here with the stats under Enhancements. Note, karma is also spent for some bonuses during Super Reincarnation, which will be talked about later. Any stats will have their numbers turn yellow, and a yellow bar appears as a visual representation of the increase. You can also see under Bonus that the attack stat has been increased by 5 points. Numbers under Karma spent will gray out once you don't have enough karma to afford another point for that stat. Press A to confirm your selection. Now, choose what level the character starts at, and for this, you pay in mana. If you go to the thousandth place and press down, it will automatically set you to the level that uses all mana. Next, pick a personality. This only changes what they say and sound like. 
Allow me! This is it! Bulk up! This is all thanks to my training! Choose a color palette. You can choose from any unlocked class proficiency colors, and you can unlock extra colors. These are acquired through bills in the Dark Assembly. Time to go over a few classes. We will start with these four. Warrior, Martial Artist, Clergy, and Witch. Warrior is a close-range class that specializes in swords and axes. Its unique ability is Wild Cry, which increases the character's stats by 10% per adjacent enemy unit. Its specials focus on giving enemies a defense down debuff. 4 panels of movement, 20 jumping power. Range for most will be 1 here. The equipped weapon can change this. Remember this only affects the attack option. But there are a few classes that have a higher range. 5 panels worth of throwing. Can do 2 counter attacks. Weapons can affect this as well. 5% critical hit rate. Take 50% more damage from fire. Takes extra damage from fists, guns, and stabs. Resists swords, spears, and axes. The Martial Artist, a close range class that specializes in fists. As it grows, it becomes better in swords, spears, and bows. But this will be its best weapon mastery. It has a high amount of counterattacks. It has a knockback effect to its first special. The rest are close as well, with some different AoE ranges. The Martial Artist's unique ability is Fury. This increases its attack power by 25% per counterattack in a single turn to a max increase of 100%. The Clergy, or Clergy, a healer. It specializes in stabs. It also gets Espoir. Espoir? Is it French? What language is the word Espoir? Yes! Which cures any ailment. Its unique ability is Medical Aid. When it uses a healing special, it will also remove all ailments from the target, which makes Espoir redundant because it cures ailments and nothing else. The Witch. This unit specializes in elemental magic specials. Their unique ability is Magic Moderation. It decreases the SP costs for specials by 50%. Witches also get to select a base elemental affinity during character creation. This unit will have a 75% resistance to the element you select, minus 25% to its opposite element, and a positive 25% for the last one. You can select from Fire, Wind, and Ice. The Witch learns the offensive magic for the selected element as well. If you choose Fire, your Witch will have the Fire Special. As its class proficiency increases, it will learn higher tier versions of its Fire Special. I do want to go over a couple of monsters. The previous ones were all humanoid characters. I have to bring up the Prinny. I'm usually never going to say things like what I'm about to say. The Prinny is a Disgaea staple. If they're ever gone, I don't know what this franchise will become. But to clarify, I go out of my way to not compare the mechanics or features of one game in a franchise to another. I want these videos to be explained as if you have played nothing else in the franchise. The Prinny's unique ability is Explosive Body. If thrown or hit by an explosion, it explodes too. The Prinny is the lowest in the hierarchy of the Netherworlds, so they're... disposable. More specifically, if a Prinny is thrown, it will explode and deal damage in a range of 2, equal to 50% of its max HP. Do with that information what you will. And what you will do is make a Prinny and give it as much HP as possible and throw it like your own makeshift grenade to obliterate your enemies. My two weeks notice, dude. But before you go on a printy throwing spree, do remember, if a character dies during a map, that character still counts towards your 10 unit deployment limit. This includes exploding your printies. Please printy responsibly. The Zombie. Its unique ability is Predation. It recovers HP equal to 10% of the damage it deals. Like a vampiric or lifesteal effect. Most of its specials can inflict its targets with poison. Next on the list. Delete the character. Only thing I want to point out is that once a character is deleted, it cannot be recovered, as shown by this bolded red text at the bottom of the screen. And the game does have a confirmation message to make sure you are sure, and even has the initial selection as no to help Mr. Spammy Fingers from making a mistake. Super Reincarnate. Reincarnating a character resets their level to 1. You also get to choose a capability type. Each one rewards more karma. And not just more karma, but a ton of karma, and the mana used for each one. You can still spend karma to increase stats, 
but here is where Super Reincarnate differs to create new character. There is a new tab, Unlock Ability. Press L or R to switch tabs. Spend Karma to unlock abilities. Note some of these will not be available as soon as Super Reincarnate is unlocked. Level Limit Break 1. Increase the max level limit to 9,999,999, which means you can now level past 9,999, which is the level cap until this is acquired. Per character. Capability Limit, Carnage. This is the ability that lets you exceed the base capability limit when increasing stats with Karma. This increases the cap to 500, so you can add up to 500 to a single stat under Unlock Capability. The base cap before this upgrade is 255 basic stat points. There are more versions of each of these abilities. You can increase a character's movement range. Quick reminder, this is the boot, and is how many panels a character gets to move. Increase throw range, the hand. Counter attacks, jump power, attack range. There are a lot of damage ups that increase damage by 10%, all the way to the EX. Gotta make it sound cool. Cause these raise damage by 100% each. But look at that karma cost. There's a difference if super reincarnating a created character. You can change the character to a different class. Do this if you simply want to change a character's class to something that seems better or more useful to you. The character will also keep all of its abilities, weapon masteries, and unlocked demerits. Now, once you start a vote for a bill, you get sent to the voting room and your character gets put on the stage to speak their mind and convince the senators. Senators are randomly selected from the senator list I showed earlier. The topic of the assembly is at the top of the screen. You can walk around the venue, mingle, and speak your way to voting victory. But this is the netherworld. That method sucks, and no one respects that. A better use of your time is to check which senators are here, who agrees with you, in blue, and who disagrees. In red, you can also see their level and stats, which are also useful to know. You will soon see. Above the stat window, there is a new text box. This tells you the level of agreeableness or disagreeableness the senator has for you and your proposed bill. You will see one of the following. Now, equipped with your preliminary information, time to bribe or force your way to victory in the polls. Press A next to a senator to offer a bribe. Give them one of your items, but do pay attention to their liked item, as they want those the most. Underneath liked item, it says how much they want it. Notice how even if the item is not the liked item, they can still want it. This has to do with the item's rarity. A reason to keep rare flashy items. A senator's interest in an item will be described as one of the following. Must have. Interested. Slightly interested. Not very interested. As you give a senator items, their desire to vote for your bill increases. If there are other senators from the same faction as your bribe target, their interests can shift as well. Now, if someone is not very bribe worthy, or you simply don't want to spend the items, there is another way to change their mind, so to speak. There are items that exist just for these occasions. Angel Cake, Gold Bar, Premium Crab Brains, and Superb Beef Tongue. All these items are liked by all senators. Bombs. Sometimes a senator will have some Z's above their head. They are sleeping, which means they will not vote. Bomb them to wake them up so they can do their job. Although, if it is a senator who is not on your side, well of course, let them sleep. Medicine. Sometimes senators are drunk. When voting, who knows how they'll vote, no matter what they think of you and your fancy bill. Use medicine to sober them up. Hard liquor. Makes a senator drunk. Use this on someone who absolutely loathes you. There might be a chance they vote in your favor. Chloroform. If you do not know what real world item this is, good. This puts senators to sleep. Need someone to not provide their input due to their hatred? Use this to remove their ability to vote. Speakers. It doubles the voting power of a senator. Let the ones who love you sing your praises even louder. Hopefully their extra vigor will mean even more during the votes. Once you're done manipulating the senators, move your character back onto the stage in front of the mic for the extra immersion and press X to begin the voting. A note, you can also exit assembly from here, but do know any mana consumed will not be refunded. Kinda late to hit me with that stipulation game. It's okay though, I have plenty of mana. Begin the vote. Notice the crystal netherworld wine glasses filling with blue wine for yays and red wine for nays. They go back 
and forth until one color outnumbers the other. Then everyone is served the winning color. Once the wine voting ceremony has ended, if you have failed the voting process and were forced red wine, you have three new options. Give up. Accept that the Council of Senators will not pass your bill. Pay up. Pay off the senators in hell. The game's currency, in case you forgot at this point. Persuade by force. Begin combat with everyone present. Defeat them all and forcibly pass your bill. Senators on your side are not required to be defeated. Only the nayers. The base panel spawns and you go about combat as normal. The squad shop. Want to enhance your characters and facilities even more? You will eventually acquire this entire list of squads. Let's look at the skill training squad. This squad increases skill experience gained, so it makes your specials level faster. On the right you can see the name of the squad that is currently highlighted, squad level, members, how many are in the squad versus how many member slots there are, and then the list of characters in the squad. Now recruiting members is indicating an empty squad slot. Press A to select the squad and choose its members. One member is the squad leader. Press Y to set a character as the leader. Press X to remove a character from the squad. Sometimes which character is the leader matters based on how the squad works. Press R3 to display squad effect. These are the levels of the squad and what each does. Let's get into that now. Back out of this and press Y on the squad. Spend Juice Bar EXP to level the squad and gain the appropriate effects. Levels for this squad increase the skill EXP earned even further, lets you add more members, and the last one. Members get 50% skill EXP of squad mates. Put them all in a map together using specials, and those skills are going to level. A few other squads. Bootcamp Squad. All members gain a portion of the EXP earned by the leader in battle. Channeling Squad is the same as Bootcamp, but with mana, so members gain a portion of the mana earned by the leader in battle. Relief Party. Allies in the base panel recover every turn. If your characters are low in health during maps, move them back to the base panel and they will recover some HP every turn. Level the squad to do even more for you. Supply Depot. Characters in this squad can use items from inside the base panel. Use with the Y button. This is the same as using the item option in the combat menu when you select one of your characters, just from the base panel instead, which you normally can't do. Flatty Squad. I had to put this one. Enhances the stats of flat-chested members. Prinny Squad. All members are treated like prinnies. You know what that means. I did not go over each squad. You can also find information on all squads in the video description. Cheat Shop. At this point, you shouldn't be surprised there is a cheat shop. This guy wants you to grind. It wants you to have characters that feel broken. So please, Use the cheat shop with joy and a smile. Only option is adjust settings. There are five pages you can switch between. On the right, you can view a description of what an option does. The first page is obtain rate. Here you can adjust how much experience you earn of varying types and money. Decrease the amount from one option and add it to another. You can tell how many points you have to allocate here above the obtain rate window. You do not start with this many points to allocate. As you progress the game, you will be given more points. Page 2 is Battle. Enemy Strength. Add stars to increase the strength of all your foes. It makes their levels higher, so they're stronger. Use this option when enemies start being too weak for your grind. The EXP just won't be that great if you outlevel enemies by too much. Just do not forget you increase this option. I forget all the time, because when looking at item worlds to go to, sometimes it looks like the levels are too high but I forgot I increased enemy strength. Back to square one. This places enemies in their original spots on cleared maps because the enemy layout changes after the map has been cleared. This makes the map the same as the first time. Skip innocent towns. Turn this on to skip innocent towns in the item world. Once you defeat boss floors, it will skip the innocent town, but remember your only exit for the item world becomes Mr. Genzi exits, since you cannot use the guide in innocent town to leave. Use this to speed up your item world grind a bit, and if you set up auto battle, you don't have to worry about that pause at Innocent Town to keep that item world train grind going. Page 3. Fun! Squeaky Sandals. Everyone is a bomb. Literally everyone turns into a bomb if thrown. Basically, they become a printy. Page 4. Limit. Set yourself to earn no EXP, mana, money, weapon mastery, 
special EXP, or class proficiency. Now the last two. No cancel. This makes you unable to cancel any actions during battle. Remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you you can press B to cancel literally anything and reorganize what you're doing? If you turn this on, you can't do that. This option really makes it like a typical turn-based strategy game. All decisions are final. No bonus items. If on, you won't receive items from a map's bonus list. This is useful to stop your inventory from being filled with useless stuff you know you don't want or need. Page 5. Auto Sell. These are all options to have the game auto sell items for you. The top option is Auto Sell. Turn it on to automatically sell all items. Now be sure to read the description for Auto Sell. When it is off, items will also be auto sold if your bag is full. And if auto battling, all items will be sold for 1 100th the price. That is a huge drop. If you use this, sell your highest rarity items manually if you need the hell. Auto sell type lets you choose to auto sell items for hell or item points, the points used in the item world. All the rest of the options let you choose which items will be auto sold if auto sell is turned on. The last three options let you choose by rarity. I recommend at least auto selling all commons when you notice you're getting far more items than you can use. These are what will fill up your inventory quickly. Settings. Page 1. The usual language change and volumes for BGM, sound effects, events, voice, and the graphic quality mode. Balanced, performance, and graphics. Whichever you prefer, but I recommend performance or balanced for the Switch version. Page 2 is where the options are at. Cursor mode. This affects how the D-pad is used in combat maps. More specifically, it affects only the up D-pad button. Cursor mode A makes up on the D-pad move the cursor up left. Cursor mode B makes up on the D-pad move the cursor up right. Ally effects, enemy effects, and system effects. Do you want any of these effects to be played or skipped? Speed up effects. Turn this on or off to speed up the previously mentioned effects. How much these effects are sped up by is affected by the next option. Effect speed. There are multiple speed increase levels, and you can unlock more via the dark assembly. Event speed. Speed up events. Notice its description at the bottom. This is the speed that events will be sped up while holding the ZR button during an event. Combat move speed. This is how fast characters move during maps. Base speed. How fast your character moves within the base. Cursor speed. How fast the cursor moves during maps. Text speed. How fast the text displays during cutscenes. Text auto scroll. Makes the text progress without having to press the A button. This can also be toggled during cutscenes by pressing Y. Auto scroll speed. Adjusts auto scroll speed during cutscenes. Save icon. The game lets you choose which unique character's face you want as your save icon. This even includes cameo characters, if you have them. Cameo characters being characters from previous Disgaea games. Autosave. If on, the game will autosave when you return to base. Faction colors. This gives characters and maps a slight hue of the color of their faction. It follows the color scheme of the characters menu option that shows you every unit or object on a map. Battle menu effects. I still can't figure out what this affects. Please, let me know. Camera rotation. Change which direction R and L rotate the camera. Auto battle and auto repeat. Turn them on or off here or in the other section of the X menu during combat. Auto battle group. Select a unit group to be used for auto battle or select it from your base in combat or while in home base. Auto adjust cursor. Automatically adjust cursor to the center of panels during battle. Off is a more freeform cursor, while on feels more snappy due to the cursor always being in the center of any panel. Stage start notifications. This turns off the cursor pointing you to chess slash innocence in the item world. Use boost tickets. These are acquired by themselves as DLC, but at least for the Switch version, there is a free DLC pack that gives you a 2x boost ticket which will double the amount of hell, mana, and experience gained for 100 battles. So turn this option on or off if you want to use your boost ticket. Memorize cursor position. This does not seem to do anything from my testing. If you know exactly what it does, please tell me. 
it is time for AI controls. Select demonic intelligence when selecting a character in the character menu. Everything here only becomes active if auto battle is on. There are a few preset AI options. All out attack. Have the unit focus defeating enemies on the map. Heal when in danger. When HP is low enough, the unit will start healing. And prioritize chests. The unit will prioritize destroying chests for items instead of attacking enemies. Unfortunately, these can't be edited and you also can't see what commands these options are comprised of. Your only options are set as active demonic intelligence or copy. The current active demonic intelligence is the one with a star next to it. Press the plus button to copy. Copy lets you copy this DI and paste it on another DI slot, whether that be for this character or a different one. Also, notice a new window appears showing which DI you copied. You can see the unit the DI is copied from and the name of the copied DI. Change name lets you change the name of the DI slot to help keep track of which DI options were set to do what. Paste is only highlighted when a DI slot has been set to copy. Paste the copied DI into another DI slot. You can also press the minus button for paste and the plus button for copy. Let's get into the edit option. You'll see it looks like a huge grid. There are red and blue moving arrows with various symbols indicating a type of action or condition. Character names on the top left and the right is Train of Thought. This area is the list of the actions and what order they will happen in. Here's a quick example. The first option I have set here is if an enemy is within 99 panels. If the answer is yes to this condition, follow the blue lines. Follow the red lines if no. So if yes, the next option is if I can move into attack special range. Next is if my SP is below 30%. If everything is still yes, the character will move toward a target. Target enemy forces and then normal attack. This entire tree of options is all listed under Train of Thought and changes based on which item is currently highlighted. All roads for this demonic intelligence lead to a normal attack except for one. Right here, it is set to use an attack special. If my SP is below 30%, if the answer to this one is no, the character will use an attack special. This setup was used to level a special and then when SP gets low, it will normal attack instead. This way I did not have to check my game to see if SP was low, and my characters would keep fighting no matter what. Is it the best setup for this? I doubt it immensely, but it is what I used while I played through the game. Take a quick look at the button key. Every spot on the grid that has arrows pointing to it must have an action. If you try to save the setup, the game will tell you a spot or spots need an action. If you make changes and do not save, then press the minus button to quit there will be a message to let you know there are unsaved changes. Now, let's empty this and select the only selectable spot, which is the top left. This is the command list. There are options for when, to whom, and do what. The when option is selecting when an action will take place. To whom, this option is who will be the target of the selected action. Do what is the option that tells the character what action they will take. As the list of options were scrolling, did you notice some text is in orange? Any orange text can be changed. Select an option with orange text and you can change its number value, element, item, class, whatever it is meant to display. Let's go over the when list. Remember all of these are for choosing when the next actions will be taken. On turn blank. Select the turn number for actions to begin. Every turn or turns after turn. Choose when an action occurs every set number of turns after turn 1. If my HP is above this percent, the next action will occur when this character's HP reaches the set percentage. I think you get the gist now, but I'll still explain how each option works as we get to new types. If my HP is below this percent. If an ally's HP is above this percent. If an ally's HP is below this percent. If my SP is above this percent. If my SP is below this percent. If enemy has an elemental resistance below this number, choose which element and the exact resistance number you want. The action will only occur when both parameters are met. If enemy has a weapon resistance below this number. If I am afflicted by this ailment. There is also options for an ally or enemy and options for if someone is afflicted by any ailment. If an enemy of this class is present. If an ally of this class is present. If an innocent is present. Use this for auto-battling in the item world so the AI will go after innocence. 
if a blank is present, the blank being chests, level spheres, bombs, and geo symbols. If a powerful foe is present, this is the marked enemies, like the ones marked boss. If a skip gate is present, a skip gate is this purple gate in the item world. If a mystery room gate is present, this yellow gate in the item world. If the unit I attacked last is alive, I don't know, tell them to finish their plate. Finish them off. If more than this number of allies remain, and if less than this number of allies remain, there's also the same options for enemies. If an enemy is within this number of panels, and if an ally is within this number of panels. This helps prioritize enemies within a certain radius to the character. If I can move into blank special range, there are multiples of these for different actions. There is one for attack specials, healing specials, support specials, ailment specials, normal attack, and the last one even lets you choose a specific special from the selected character's special list. Do pay attention that each of these only applies if the character can move into an appropriate range for the selected option. This does not make the character actually move, nor does it make the character perform the special or attack selected. This is purely for if the character can move into range of your selection. Be sure to tell them to move or perform a specific action after this command. Use the next set instead if the character is already in range. If I am in blank special range. If I'm currently lifting, please let me finish the set before speaking to me. I like to focus. Got your attention back because, be honest, our minds wander off while others are talking sometimes. But seriously, if I'm currently lifting is a when option. If I'm lifting more than this number of units, you can stack up to 9 units. If we are at least this many floors into the IW, IW stands for item world. You could use this to create a setup to leave the item world. If the item's level is above this number, this is the level of the item while in the item world. This percentage of the time. Interesting. Setting something to only occur a certain percentage of the time. A little bit of RNG. To whom? Select who will be the target of your actions. Enemy forces, ally forces, myself, neutral forces, and non-ally forces. The color of each of these target symbols is the same color used to identify each type while in a map. Red is enemies and non-ally forces, blue is allied forces, and yellow is neutral forces. Nearest unit and farthest unit. Perform your action on whichever is closest or furthest away. Panel. Set coordinates to target a specific panel. Use this option when repeating a map continuously on auto battle that has the same enemy layout each time. Highest level unit and lowest level unit. Unit with the highest or lowest HP percent. Unit with the highest and lowest remaining HP in percentage and flat amounts. Units with the highest or lowest of a chosen stat. Unit with the lowest resistance to an element or weapon type. Unit afflicted by a chosen ailment. This star lets you select a class, so you can straight up target a specific class on the map. Innocence. Chest. You can change between chest, level sphere, bomb, and geo symbol. Powerful foes. Skip gate. Mystery room gate. Base panel. As a reminder, it is the panel you deploy your units from. Last attacked target. Target other than last attacked. Lifted unit. Avoid invincible targets. There are moments this is useful. Read your geo symbols. Avoid damage reflecting targets and prioritize damage reflecting targets. This is usually another geo symbol thing. Allies who can team attack. Random target. I don't know why you would use this one. Reset target. Use this to reset a unit's attack target in case all warriors on a map are defeated, but you need them to now attack witches next. Do what? Move toward target. The character will use as much of its movement as possible to reach the specified target. Move to the farthest valid attack range. Move to a point of this number of panels away. Normal attack. Use an attack special. Use a healing special. Use a support special. Use an ailment special. Not very specific on which special to use for the character, but they're here. Prioritize physical specials. Prioritize spells if you only want to use specific special types. Prioritize a chosen element special. Use a chosen special. Defend, lift, and throw. Use a specific item from your consumables list. Wait until other units have acted. Use this to help control the order the AI goes in. Also, do you recall turning off specials to make them not appear in the special selection during combat? Turning them off can also be a way to manipulate what skills are used by the AI during auto battle. So you can do that, 
or use the demonic intelligence options that let you choose a character's specific special. That is everything, but I wanted to take a moment to briefly talk about post-game. Remember the two different difficulty settings you saw earlier? There are more than that. Once you beat the story, new options appear in the Dark Assembly that will add new things to the Dimension Guide. Check the Dark Assembly for new options as you complete these new missions. Also, let me state that completing the post-game content requires ACTUAL GRIND. So, figure out what to do using all the tools I explained in this video and by reading abilities. They will be very important to you. I know I was a bit vague for the post game. I just wanted to give you a little direction. But as always, for those of you that want the extra detail and specifics on what to do, I found someone here on YouTube who can help you with that. I also listened to his videos to help me do post game because I don't for Disgaea games. But since I decided to make this guide, I decided it was time for me to learn some post game shenanigans too. There are links in the video description for the full item rank chart, a list of all abilities, an item guide on game facts explaining the item world bonuses I said you did not need to worry about, and other calculations. All of the mystery rooms in the item world, all innocence, and a little something I did not mention in the video proper. Unique innocents that do some quite unique things. All squads, all quests, all classes slash characters, and all items. This is a lot of information, but please know you do not need to know all of these things to successfully play this game. Enjoy coming up with your own strategies and ways of making your teams broken. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more guides like this, click the subscribe button or even just look to the left to see one of my previous guides. Leave a comment suggesting games you'd like to see a guide for next. Mention something I missed or perhaps your experience with Disgaea 6. Until next time. Yeah.